Hello everybody, welcome to CVG TV. My name is Gregory Parks and this is Conlink. On this episode of Conlink, one of our guests of honor, the person best known for a popular show, Reverend Matt's Monster Science. I bring you Matt Kesson. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is very exciting. Ah, it's so cool to have you here. Thank and you. I know you are not new to Convergence. Oh, no, no, no. I've been doing it for quite a number of years. Um, I've had a, uh, I've done my show, Reverend Matt's Monster Science, uh, on the main stage for the last uh, number of years. I was not able to attend last year, but I did several years before that. Um, I usually do a show uh, that is tuned into whatever the uh, year's theme is, um, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. And, and of course, I do a lot of panels and a lot of other stuff, and it's, it's, a, it's a terrific convention, and I've been doing it for a while, so it's, it's exciting to be back, and especially in this, in this uh, role. Excellent. And yeah, like you're this time, you're it's, a guest of honor. The honor is all mine. Well, it's, you're going to have a liaison and everything. I and... know. I have no idea what I'm going to do with him, but I'll figure something out. <laughs> 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 well, you, you're going to be in great company among guests of honor. Oh, yes. I've enjoyed yes. Here. Yeah, I saw the other ones. It's fantastic. It's very cool. Yeah. So, like, uh, so you being a guest of honor, so you can't answer yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but who would you love to see as a guest of honor? At convergence, like so, who would you like to join you and all the others in the pantheon of convergence guests of honor? Well, I mean, um, wow, that's I mean, there's so many possibilities, aren't there? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the one that that comes the most to mind because I know she's doing the circuit a little bit right now, um, especially in the wake of her book. But I'd love to see. Uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Cassandra Peterson, Ooh. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and especially in the wake of, uh, of her autobiography oh, and man. the very exciting you know, revelations that have come from that. And yeah. so that would be, I mean, I've actually met her. I've, I've, I went to a convention in wow. New Jersey about 12 years ago and met her and all that sort of thing, and she was extremely lovely. So it's not even, it's not even pure, I mean, I'd love to meet her again, but it's not even pure selfishness. I've already got a picture with her, but, uh, <laughs> but, but I think she would be a fantastic, a fantastic guest. Uh, that's the first thing that comes to mind anyway. Oh, yeah. God, that would be so good. Yeah, it would. That would be so good. So and it's amazing. great. She's been at it for so long. She's been really consistent and just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Not been yet. running a marathon. Yeah, no, it's her 40th anniversary of doing this. And then, uh, and, and then for me, it's just a question of, you know, what I do is, uh, is monster comedy. I do a comedy show about monsters. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, she's the... She's the progenitor of that, you know? I mean, she's, she's an inspiration to me as far as mixing monster material and comedy material. And so, yeah, so she's amazing. So that would be, that would be my, the first thing that comes <laughs> to mind anyway. That'd be amazing. So who, who are some other people who inspired you, who, uh, who you look up to? Sure. Because, I mean, because with the monster science, you have your own, you have your own take on it. It's lecture-based. It's educational. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Who are... The other people, in addition to Elvira, who influenced and inspired you and continue to do so. Sure. Well, I mean, I want to be Stephen Fry when I grow up, certainly, <laughs> um, because that's very much that's very much the the vibe I'm going through. Because uh, I, I'm, I'm going for because uh, I mean, if you see Stephen Fry, especially what he's been doing over the last decade or two, he, Stephen Fry knows everything. Every <laughs> single thing, um, and like he's on British talk shows, and, the, and they just parody the fact that he's just this outrageous font of knowledge. But then, of course, he is also very funny and very charming, and all that sort of thing. So basically, I want to be Stephen Fry when I grow up. So, uh, so he's a very major influence. There is a writer on cryptozoology and monsters uh, by the name of Darren Nash, um, who uh, who is extremely enthusiastic about monsters, but uh, but brings. A level of critical thinking to cryptozoology that is not always there in cryptozoology, and, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so, so I'm a big fan of his. Uh, let's see who else are some good influences. Um, I mean, as a comedian, uh, I'm a terribly big fan of Eddie Izzard, um, mm. and you know, which is which is you know a little, a little which has been going on for quite some time. But uh, but he again, and he of course, while while being primarily a comedian. You know, has this material about World War II and Stonehenge, and you know, and there's there's a lot of interesting historical information in his stuff, and so uh, so I yeah I'd call him a, a big influence as well. Amazing. Yeah, that's really, and, and I see some of that in well, definitely in in your program. 
And I, I even like seeing that, the, and what you do, I think, is part of something that, in, along with Stephen Fry mm. and Eddie Izzard and even Hannah Gadsby, sure. now, as of late, people incorporating that into comedy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a terribly big fan, so yeah. So, um, along with that, yes. there's, there's a lot of scholarship that goes into your shows, into every one of your shows. Yeah. What was the thing that first got you into cryptozoology and monsters, and then at what point did you decide I'm going to start doing shows or lectures on monsters and cryptozoology. Yeah, I mean, what got me into monsters was being a six-year-old, and (laughs) I didn't, you know, and I just never let it go was the only thing. Um, Yeah, I can't, I I mean, I can can do, depending on time, um, just real quick, okay, how much time do we have? Can I tell a little story? You can uh, tell a little story. I'll tell a little story. Edit it out if it's no good. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, there, okay, so jackalopes, you know what jackalopes are, of yes. course, and jackalopes are, the, the idea is caused by a, uh, by a thing called the Shope papillomavirus, which is, uh, which is transferred by biting insects, and it causes tumors, which is to say very large warts, on the skin, and, it's, and rabbits get it, and it's, like I say, it's transferred by biting insects, and most of a rabbit is covered in fur, and so it's hard for rabbits to bite them, or for rabbits, hard for insects to bite them, but a place that is not covered in fur is right between the ears. And so the insects will bite them between the ears, and then they will get these big elongated warts, huge elongated warts between their ears, and, which do which are brown and gnarled and kind of resemble horns. And so this is, this is, this is the origin of the jackalope idea. And uh, when I was like eight or nine, there was a rabbit with the show papillomavirus on my block. And uh, yeah, and I just spent the summer, I mean, like I never saw it like scratch at them. It, it, the, the actual virus didn't seem to cause it any problems. Its biggest problem was the enormous juvenile primate that just followed it everywhere, which is to say <laughs> me. Um, and I didn't want to catch it or hurt it or anything. I just wanted to look at it as much as I could. And so I spent the summer just running around after the jackalope. And, uh, and I like to think of that actually as, sort of my origin story because that was me as an impressionable child having a you know legendary creature be real um, in front of me and I think I th- I've always thought of that as kind of formative to my my ongoing obsession with uh, with unusual creatures and monsters and so forth so that so that's a so that's a story as far as uh, wha- how I decided to do it um, there's actually a local show that I'm a producer of now but wasn't at the time called the encyclopedia show which is a show where they bring in people to, uh, where, where, there's a, where there's a theme for each show and they bring in various local performers to just present something on that theme, be it a talk or a dance or whatever. And they had one in 2012 that was Mythical Creatures. And so the producer, who was a friend of mine, invited me to do that because he knew how I was. And, uh, and I went and did a thing about griffins. And, uh, and then the following month was Dinosaurs, so I just went and did that. And, uh, and then the month after that, was obsolete diseases, so I went and did one about lycanthropy, which is obsolete in a lot of ways, and uh, and then they just invited me to come and present anytime I liked, and so I did it pretty much every month, shoehorning monsters into this bizarre variety of, of topics, uh, punctuation, um, fast food, all kinds of things, and uh, so that was a lot of fun for a lot of years, but uh, but it, you know it went nicely, and and I began to get like comedy festivals, and I got some gigs at local museums during, uh, during monster-themed events that they would have, and so it's become, you know, and now I've got a monthly gig at the Bryant Lake Bowl, and, it, and I'm just, I just couldn't be happier about how it's all gone, obviously. So the Encyclopedia Show was its, uh, was its genesis, but really, being a comedian who talks about monsters is what I was put on earth to do, and so it's just <laughs> a question of having found my forums, and I'm very, very grateful and lucky that, that, I, that I have. Amazing. I think I rem- I definitely remember seeing you at one such encyclopedia show. Sure. And but actually, my first memory of you in one of your presentations mm. was at a private event. It sounds weird to say a private event. It's like a hoity-toity private event. No, it was Not like hardly. some friends, uh, friends having over, and we were going to have a group viewing of. Um, 
Or was this it came from beneath the sea? Or no, no, it, no, it was okay. um, Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. Oh yes, of course. Yes, and yes, yes. so you, so before we watched the movie, like we had, we had ordered the food, and yeah. before we watched the movie, you did a joint presentation on the Megalodon. On the Megalodon and, and the then, Giant Octopus. Then Giant Octopi. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that was, <laughs> and this was in somebody's living room, and there was, just, and I was just like. This is so amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm an obsessed monomaniac, and uh, yeah, and and ready to do this at any time. And like I say, I'm just very grateful that that I've found I've found a forum and people people who were who, who want to see it. So it's great. And it's very cool that you've been able to find and carve out that that niche. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed about it. Uh, yeah, if, if I go back in time to, I mean, like it really started to take off as its own thing about five years ago when I did a show at the Science Museum of Minnesota uh, when they were having a mythical creatures exhibit and I went and did a show about griffins and from then I started to just get a lot of lengthy solo gigs and, you know, like right now I have a monthly show at the Bryant Lake Bowl and, you know, a Patreon and, and with a lot of subscribers and it's, uh, and it's awesome. all very lovely. And... Uh, but I forget where I was going with this. Um, but <laughs> the, it's the, uh, the beauty of having to have been able to carve this out and make yeah. this way. For well, yourself. yeah, and uh, and it's just it's it's just the most wonderful thing in the world that uh, that this has all come together because it's like I say it's what I was you know I'm I'm here in the world to tell jokes about manticores and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and it's just it's just indescribably thrilling to me that that I've managed to you know that I've managed to find an audience. It's you know of course it's been an enormous amount of work, but uh, but yeah it's 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 just it's I'm I'm just over the moon. If you go to any I remember I think I was going to say if you go to any Matt Kesson prior to 2017 when I got the Science Museum gig and things really started to roll. If you go back in time and tell any Matt Kesson prior to 2017 that I'm do you know describe my life to that Matt Kesson, he mm. doesn't believe you. You know, he's, he's <laughs> just, he's, you could knock him over with a feather with that. Just the idea that this is, this is a thing that has come to pass. It's, it's, it's wonderful and amazing, and I'm extremely proud of it. Well, I think it speaks, like your enthusiasm speaks to what the same thing is that has people enjoying what you do, and that you have, that when you talk about these things, or even the idea comes up that somebody's going to be doing a lecture on, well, you know, here the, today's lecture is going to be on Scylla versus Charybdis, Scylla, Scylla and Charybdis. Yeah, sure, absolutely. You know, and people, you know, people like, seriously, somebody's going to be doing oh, sure. a lecture on this, and they yeah. want to go see. And I think part of, to me, part of what's so cool about what you do is that I think you help adults remember that they're into this oh, or, yeah. that, or that they were once into this cool stuff or that they're like, you know, that is kind of really, you know, that is kind of really cool. I still have this, you know, kind of like an adult who's like, you know, one adult is messing up the name of a dinosaur and you're just like, oh, Triceratops. Stegosaurus! <laughs> <laughs> Stegosaurus! How could you not see? I'm you not know? happy about it, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that those, you're, you're touching and reaching those adults, those of us who are still out there. Well, I hope <laughs> and who so, haven't, yeah. And who haven't, you know, successfully put that Destroyed that part of their, part of them their childhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, of course, yeah. Uh, well, I certainly hope so, and I think there's, I think there's, uh, you know, a tons of room for that. I, I get reviewed by theater reviewers in town, <laughs> as well, and my favorite theater reviewers um, will say stuff about. Because you know, because it's it's a show made out of facts about monsters and jokes, and these are the two pillars of Reverend Matt's monster science. But uh, but they, the pillars stand on a bed of uh, of just love for this, of enthusiasm, and so my favorite my favorite reviewers will be ones that call it, that that are like that say stuff about how my enthusiasm shines through. You can tell how much I love it, and that's uh -huh. yeah, and that's that's what I'm going for. If there's any if there's any, I mean, various shows have various sort of messages and and uh, and, and and morals and them, but the, the overriding moral of Reverend Matt's Monster Science is how great all this stuff is. Look at this stuff. This is amazing, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and because, you know, you start to get into it, 
and you just find out all this, all this stuff. You know, like like one of one of my ongoing morals is that as much as I, especially when talking about mythological stuff, is uh, everybody knows about. Cerberus and uh, you know and the Hydra and that stuff and in Minnesota everybody knows about Fenris you know everybody mm -hmm. knows about the Norse stuff and all that sort of thing and you know and and one one knows why um, and then one also knows why nobody knows about any American indigenous monsters or mm -hmm. African monsters or anything like that and obviously this is for bad reasons that need to be combated in and of themselves but also they're for another reason like. Like in, in the Pacific Northwest, there's, there's a creature called either the Wazgo or the Gonakadet, depending on which of, the, which of the various people there. And it is a combination of a wolf and an orca. And there aren't really any surviving stories about it, but who, but, and that's too bad, but still, what do you need? It's a combination of a wolf and an orca. We, this is great. <laughs> um, and, so, uh, and so apart from just the, just the justice level of, uh, of not hearing about you know, non-European monsters, there's just all this wonderful stuff that is, that is uh, that is neglected, and certainly in you know even in the history of film or anything like that, there's there's all of these weird little 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 moments that I get to find out about and tell people about that are amazing. So uh, so yeah, it's it's just such a labor of love, and the research part of any show is one of my favorite parts because you just find out all this amazing stuff. And so yeah, yeah, it's great. And then maybe find bones for another show and another show. Yes, exactly. Yes, precisely. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm not going to put through the ringer of you know having you choose one but i would like to um, just ask rundown uh, you know just give a list, a list. just an un, un, unnumbered list i'm not just like name top 5 yeah, you know yeah. just um, what are some of your favorite uh, monsters from uh, cultural mythologies cultural mythologies okay well i i mean the wazgo slash ganakadet is just Great. Um, of the European monsters, I have uh, I, I, my favorite is uh, is the Griffin, um, just for a lot of reasons. I think it's gorgeous and stately. And then I and then I there were some books when I was a kid that had griffins in it so that 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 in them yeah. that gave me sort of a sort of a sentimental attachment to them. Um, let's see, what are some other good? Uh, I love Tengus, which are a Japanese thing. These, these sort of mountain goblins that are that are in, in either they have these huge long noses or they're they're crow-headed, and that's the way I like them. And they have they have uh, they have wings, and they and they they're in outrageously magical, and they're master swords people. And and one of their things is that they harass hypocritical priests, which is yeah, let, yes, yes, let's do a <laughs> bunch of that. Yeah, 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 more of that is great. Um, so Tengu are a, are a very big favorite of mine. Uh, what are some other good ones? There's. Uh, there's a uh, there's an African one called the Ngojama, which uh, which is sort of a sort of a hairy ogre creature, but it has one to two iron spikes coming out of the palm of one of its hands, and that's just you know, and I don't know what that wow. is. I don't know what that means, but it's it's great. So check that out. That's 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 super cool. So <laughs> it has a spike uh, in its hands. Yeah, exactly. It's it's yeah, it's a, it's a mythical African wolverine, and that's 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 terrific. <laughs> so uh, um, yeah, so those would be yeah, I would say. Yeah, Griffin is a big favorite. The Wazgo Gonakadet is is a big favorite. And the Tengu is 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 a very big favorite. Uh, let's see. The dragon mythology worldwide is 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 terrific. I'm a big I'm a I'm I'm a big fan of that. Um, yeah. So that's that's a couple. That's that's five or six. I mean, I can go on and on. I have a whole show where oh, I do. I understand. Yes. <laughs> and now to spin off of that, what is uh, what are some of your favorite monsters from movies and television? Okay, well, I mean, I love your shirt very much. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I am. I'm a. I'm a terribly big, uh, terribly big Godzilla fan. Um, Rodan is my favorite monster among them. But uh, yeah, but 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 I love the whole kaiju genre very very much. Um, I'll, I will tell. I will tell your viewers a secret, which is that I'm very well known for being a kaiju person. You know, everybody sends me all the kaiju memes on uh, on Facebook. But the secret, the secret is that my favorite actual uh, creature-based series is Planet of the Apes. Um, I love the original. Uh, the sequel is terrible, but then the next. You know, there a lot of. There's a lot of great movies and great, very different movies in the Planet of the Apes series, and they're very intelligent. And I'm a terribly big fan of that. So that's a, that's a big favorite. Um, 
you know, uh, Star Wars monsters are terrific. Uh, the uh, the Tauntaun, I think, is my favorite Star Wars monster. I think it's just a terrific bit of creature design because it precisely, it, it doesn't look like, you know, like a goat with uh, with wings or something like that. It, it's, it's very, it's entirely unique, but entirely believable. It looks like a creature without simply being a, a uh, an obvious combination of living creatures. So I think I think yeah. the Tauntaun is a, is a terrific terrific bit of creature design. Uh, let's see what else is good. Um, I'm a big I'm a terribly big Ray Harryhausen fan. Oh, um, yeah. So yeah, and I think my <laughs> one of the masters. There's so many great ones of his. Um, I love the Emir from uh, Twenty Million Miles from Earth. I love the Redosaurus from Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. Uh, what other movies does he have that have the word twenty in their title? I don't know, but uh, but yeah, the <laughs> Valley of Guanji. I mean, it's just a dinosaur, but it's a great dinosaur. So, uh, so certainly that's that's uh, that, those are big favorites as well. Well, Harryhausen, uh, correct, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Harryhausen was still alive when the original Clash of the Titans movie was made, right? Well, he made. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's he did, him. Yeah. He did Pegasus. He did right. the Kraken. Right. Yes. He did quite so. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah he considers those, he considers yeah. the Medusa to be one of his greatest works, and 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 it rightly was, so. Yeah, she was terrifying. Yeah, it was absolutely terrifying, and yeah, and it is very common now for Medusa to be given the the snake body instead of legs, and he invented that. There is there yeah. that is not a thing that occurred in Medusa before Harryhausen, and so oh, wow. all the time that that happens is uh, one thing. You know, as you mentioned, we. Uh, um, I'm, of course, a terribly big fan, as you are already aware, of Vermithrax Pejorative yes. from Dragon Slayer. Best um, dragon ever. Best dragon ever. And <laughs> yeah, and so many dragon I mean, I mean, I think Game of Thrones and uh, Peter Jackson's The Hobbit movies, which I don't like, but nevertheless. Um, I mean, dragon, I mean, Vermithrax was so great and has not been, not been bested, but so many dragons since him are just, I mean, the, the, that build that form the basic idea of the the the, the four the the two-legged and, and two-winged dragon walking mm. on its on its uh, on its wings like a bat has become kind of an industry standard because of that film because it's great because it's amazing so yeah. Uh, so yeah that's another good one <sighs> Ve veering a little bit off of that mm -hmm. uh, so there are people like monsters people like dragons mm. uh, People like to be scared. People like the mystical. What is some sort of, um, not some sort, what is a pocket of fandom or mythology that you would like to see given more attention? Oh, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm a, that's a very interesting question. Um, I would like, the, again, just the first thing that comes to my mind is... I would like to see a general reassessment of 1950s and 1960s science fiction because, uh, on the one hand, some of it is garbage and terrible, and uh, but so garbage and terrible that the tendency to make fun of it is to, I mean, we're not talking about mystery science theater. Mystery science theater does wonderful work, and I, I have, I have, I have no, but the people who do like parodies of. Uh, of 50s and 60s science fiction and so forth. Um, to me, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, I mean, the bad ones are so bad. Yes, we know, we know. Um, they tried and they were earnest and it didn't work out, just leave it alone. But there's so many pieces of science fiction from this time that, uh, that are extraordinary. Um, that, um, certainly The Day the Earth Stood Still uh, and Forbidden Planet are, are you know, generally held to be extraordinary films, but really just the whole, the whole period I would like to see, uh, see reassessed and, and, and given some of the respect that it deserves and, 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 and in my opinion rarely gets. So that would be, that would be a, yeah, that would be a corner of the fandom that I'd like to see get more of, uh, get more attention. I mean, like I said, I've been going to Convergence for quite a number of years and so I am, familiar with the fact that there is no corner of the fandom that doesn't get any attention, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean everybody's doing fine one way or the other, you know, but uh, um, I'd be curious, I'd almost be, I'm, I'm uh, I mean, certainly Doctor Who doesn't need any more attention, but, uh, you know, Doctor Who's doing fine, but uh, one thing that's interesting, like I had the opportunity to interview Neve McIntosh, who plays Madame Vastra a couple of years ago, and one of the questions I asked her, I said, in America, um, Either you have no interest in Doctor Who, or uh, or you love it 
more than anything, more than your mother. Um, <laughs> and there's just nothing in between. I once told a, a friend of mine, the very, very funny Shannon Custer, that, that I was a casual Doctor Who fan. And she said, there's no such thing as a casual Doctor Who fan. That's like being a casual heroin fan. And, uh, and Neve McIntosh tells me that, oh, no, actually, no, you can just kind of be into Doctor Who in Britain. Because that, that was my question, is that, is this the way it is in, in the UK? And she's like, no, you can, you, no, you can just kind of be into Doctor Who. And I, I don't know, I think that's a, I think that's a thing that we could, we could, we could see more of. Is Find the middle ground the of middle Doctor ground Who of appreciation. Liking Doctor Who fine without it being a lifestyle I like choice. It okay. I mean, it's great to be, I mean, yay for it being a lifestyle choice. Doctor Who is amazing, but, uh, but I think it would almost help it to be more popular, to break out a little bit if, mm -hmm. uh, if, if there were more of a middle ground. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I hope many people watching this are like, I'm a casual Doctor Who fan, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, that so yeah. Many, that many people will learn that they're not alone. Yes, exactly. In being a casual Doctor Who fan. Exactly, yes. So as you said, you've been to many convergences, and mm -hmm. as a last question, yes. I would like to say, or I would like to ask, what do you look forward to each convergence? What brings you back? Oh, all sorts of stuff. Um, I mean, I mean, I love doing my show. It's it's a great place to do my show. Certainly, I always I always get to meet a bunch of people who uh, who I always get to put it in front of a bunch of people and people are, and it's just a beautiful welcoming convention for my show and I'm so happy about that. Um, I I uh, I always find something great in the dealer room every uh, every year. That's terrific. And at least once every year, usually two or three times over the course of the weekend, I do just a cosplay tour. Just just going around the convention, taking pictures with all my favorite cosplay, and uh, and so that's uh, that's 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 always a highlight for me. I love I love the stuff. I particularly love the stuff where, uh, and, and you know, and it's a big thing in cosplay. People do wonderful. All I have nothing bad to say about cosplay, but my own particular favorite stuff is uh, is the stuff where where they've kind of invented something out of various materials, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, like, I think one of my favorites that I ever saw was, uh, and I've got a picture with it, was, was a guy who was Daft Punk Imperial Scout Trooper, so it was the, so it was yeah. the, whole, it was the whole Daft Punk thing, and then a silver, silver Return of the Jedi Scout Trooper uh, awesome. mask, and that was, that was amazing, so that was one of my favorites. So yeah, and there's the guy who was, I don't, I don't know if he's been there, a, a couple of years ago there was the dude in like the eight foot tall cardboard robot suit that played music, and I just, <laughs> I just, I love that stuff, so that's, so that's great, and I just love, I just love hanging out with everybody, and it's just this great, pop, you know, I do the, I do the, I do the, the party room crawl, you know, mm -hmm. on Friday and Saturday night, and I see other panels. You know, it's just such a it's such a, such a delightful, delightful gathering together and seeing what people have and enjoying people's enthusiasm. Yeah. There's a reason why it's called Geek Prom. Yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes, quite so. Well, thank you for joining us here on the couch. It's been a pleasure to have you, it's and we look to forward here. to seeing the wonders that you will bring to us at Convergence this year. Thanks so much, I'm honored to be here. Um, I hope to see you all there. Thanks very much. Beautiful, and thank you for joining us here at ConLink. I'm Gregory Parks, we will see you on the next episode.